Moving on to the next example for the synthetic division of polynomials. So we got 12x cubed plus 2x squared plus 11x plus 14 divided by 3x plus 2. Now again, we did this same example with uh, long division, so I'll put a link in the description box to that example so you could compare both methods. But uh, let's divide this uh, synthetically. So first thing we always check with synthetic division is, is the divisor, in this case 3x plus 2, is it linear? And it is. 3x plus 2 is a line. It has a degree of 1. The next thing we check is, does it take either the form of x minus k or ax minus b? Well, it doesn't take the form of x minus k because there's this constant in front now, this 3. So it takes the form ax minus b. You know what? I should also write here ax plus b. So in this case, it's taking the form ax plus b. So the process of this is going to be a little different because we first have to manipulate the divisor before going into the synthetic division process. So I decided to write out, I'm going to write out the series of steps that we, uh, that we undertake when we have an AX plus B or an AX minus B divisor. So I suggest that you write these out and refer to them because the process is a little bit more complex. So the first step is we factor out the A value from the divisor. So if we take out an A value from this divisor, AX plus B, we would be left with X plus B over A. And if we take out an A value from this divisor, we would be left with AX minus B over A. So if we go back to our example, our divisor of 3X plus 2, if we our A value is this, uh, is this 3 here. So if we factor that out, we'd have 3, and then we'd be left with x plus 2 over 3. Now our next step, after we factor out the A from the divisor, is that this remaining bracket here has to be in the form x minus k, or x minus an expression. So in this case, for the AX minus B divisor, it already is in an X minus K form, right? X minus B over A. So this B over A here represents our K value. However, this bracket right here, X plus B over A, that's not X minus an expression. So we have to change that to X minus negative B over A, which is the same as X plus B over A. And now it's in the form X minus an expression or X minus a K value. So our K value in this case would be negative B over A. So going back to our specific example, notice how the remaining bracket x plus 2 over 3, it's not in the x minus k form. So to switch that, we would just simply write x minus negative 2 over 3. And now our k value that we're going to use is negative 2 over 3. And now the third step, once we have our K value, we just perform synthetic division with it like we've been doing before. So going back to our specific example, we got our K value of negative two over three. So now we would just perform synthetic division on this dividend with that K value. So we draw the chart out. So our K value negative two over three would go here. And this k value, by the way, will always be a fraction now whenever we're dealing with a divisor of either ax plus b or ax minus b. So the k value negative 2 over 3 goes here, and now we rewrite the, uh, the exponents, or sorry, the leading coefficients of the dividends. So we would write 12 here, 2, 11, and 14. Same process applies. The first term comes down, so that's 12. Then we take this 12 and we multiply it by our k value of negative 2 over 3. So 12 times negative 2 over 3 gives us a value of negative 8. And then 2 plus negative 8, that gives us negative 6. 
then we take this negative 6 and then multiply it by negative 2 over 3. So negative 6 times negative 2 over 3, that gives us positive 4. 11 plus 4, that gives us 15. Then 15 times our k value of negative 2 over 3. So 15 times negative 2 over 3 gives us negative 10. And then 14 plus negative 10, that gives us 4. So as usual, this last number here gives us our remainder. However, when our divisor is either ax plus b or ax minus b, as we have in this case, these leading coefficients, we have to perform a fourth step. So we have to divide the resulting leading coefficients by our value a, which we factored out in step one, in order to get the final quotient. Okay, so the remainder is always whatever number you get here. However, these resulting leading coefficients, you have to divide all of them by the a value or the number that you factored out initially. So we factored out this three, so that's our a value. So we have to divide all of these leading coefficients by three. And when we do that, so 12 divided by 3, that gives us 4. Negative 6 divided by 3, that gives us negative 2. And then 15 divided by 3, that gives us 5. And those are the leading coefficients of our quotient. So our quotient, the final result is uh, 4x squared minus 2x plus 5, and then our remainder is 4, which is the same result that we got when we did this with long division. However, it's just a bit of a more complex process, a lot of steps involved, so make sure you write these down and make sure that you review them, especially this last part here. You gotta remember whatever resulting leading coefficients you get, you have to divide it by whatever a value that you factored out initially. Now a couple of you may be asking yourselves why do we take these leading coefficients and divide them by the a value to get our final quotient and you really don't have to know why you, I would just recommend you remember to do so, but if you're really interested in knowing the intuition, I made this separate section here where I'll, I'll explain it. So. If you look at the initial question, our divisor was in the form ax plus b. However, when we did our synthetic division, our divisor was in this x plus b over a form, or this x minus negative b over a, right? So when we did the division, our divisor was not ax plus b like it's supposed to be, it was x plus b over a. Okay, so if we write out the division statement when we initially did the synthetic division, the dividend is equal to our initial divisor of x plus b over a times the quotient plus the remainder. Now, to take this divisor of x plus b over a and to switch it into the ax plus b form, what do we do? Well, we would just, fa we would just factor back in that a, so we would multiply it by a. However, if we have this whole division statement, we can't just take one part of it and multiply it by a. We have to multiply everything on the left and everything on the right side by a as well. So, a times the dividend and then this part right here x plus b over a times the quotient that's an expression in itself so when we multiply that by a we would just factor in the a into the first bracket we would end up with a divisor of ax plus b the quotient stays the same and then this remainder is its own expression, so we have to multiply that by a as well. Okay, so we'd have plus a times the remainder. Now, we don't want to have this a times the dividend, we want to have the original dividend as we had it, right, just by itself. So what do we do? Well, we would divide 
everything by a. And since we divided the left side by a, everything on the right side has to get divided by a as well. All right, so the a's cancel out here. Notice how with the remainder, the a's cancel out. So we're just left with the r that we initially got when our divisor was x plus b over a. Hence why we did not divide the remainder by three. We just kept it as four. And now notice how this part here we can keep as ax plus b, which is our original divisor in the question. But now the quotient that we got when we divided by x plus b over a, that quotient is divided by the a value. All right, so I just took this a value and I since these are multiplying, you could just divide one of them by a. So I chose to divide the quotient by a. So when we divide that quotient that we got by a, we end up getting our final quotient when our divisor is ax plus b. Again, it's a, it's a bit of a complex uh, reason why we do so. I'm not sure if I explained it to you uh, that well. But uh, again, my suggestion is just remember that when you have a divisor of ax plus b or ax minus b, once you get to this point, the leading coefficients, you have to divide by whatever a value you factored out initially in this step one when we were manipulating the divisor. So after dividing, we got a quotient of 4x squared minus 2x plus 5, and our remainder was 4. And if you compare that with the same example that we did in the long division way, it was the same result.